Assalamualaikum. Peace. Hello, Abes. I am your instructor, Engineer Rhymes. And today, we are going to discuss Principles of Dynamics. Learning outcomes. At the end of this lesson, the students can define dynamics, distinguish the two branches of dynamics, use the four basic equations of dynamics, solve problems involving dynamics, and explain on how to solve problems involving dynamics. Dynamics a branch of physical science and subdivision of mechanics that is concerned with the motion of material objects in relation to the physical factors that affect them force, mass, momentum, energy. mechanics that deals with the analysis of bodies in motion. Branches of Dynamics There are two branches of dynamics, kinematics and kinetics. Kinematics, which describes motion without regard to its causes in terms of position, velocity, and acceleration where kinetics, which is concerned with the effect of forces and torques on the motion of bodies having mass. Another definition of these two branches of dynamics, kinematics, a study of the geometry of motion, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time regardless on how motion is caused by the forces acting on the object. While kinetics, a study on how motion is resulted from external forces acting on the object. The difference between these two branches of dynamics is that in kinetics, it is concerned with the forces acting on the object which makes it move, while in kinematics, it is concerned only with the motion of the object but not with the forces that acts upon it. We may recall kinematics in our physics subject. Displacement, with the symbol S, is the change in position of the object as the time changes. We also have velocity as the time derivative of displacement. We can solve for the value of velocity when we have the equation of displacement as the function of time. We can get the derivative with respect to time. Next is acceleration as the time derivative of velocity or the second time derivative of displacement. In kinetics, it is concerned with force work, energy, and power it is governed with the Newton's second law of motion about force with the equation force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration. The foundations of dynamics were laid at the end of the 16th century by Galileo Galilei who made careful observation concerning motion for freely falling bodies motion in an inclined plane and motion of the pendulum he was also the first to recognize that force is the cause of changes in the velocity of a body a fact guided by galileo's work isaac newton formulated his second law of motion in 17th century the newton's first law of motion is the law of inertia an object at rest will remain at rest, like for example the soccer ball, unless acted on by an unbalanced force where the player kicks the ball and that is the unbalanced force. An object in motion will continue with constant speed and direction unless acted on by an unbalanced force. 
unbalanced force. So, it will stop when another unbalanced force act upon it. Like, for example, when it hits the net. object will only accelerate if there is a net or unbalanced force acting upon it. The presence of an unbalanced force will accelerate an object, changing its speed, its direction, or both its speed and direction. Newton's second law states that the force acting on a body is equal to the rate of change of the body's momentum. If the same force is applied to an object with greater mass, the object accelerates at a slower rate because mass adds inertia. Wow! For the Newton's third law of motion, which is the law of interaction, the forces of action and reaction between interacting bodies are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and collinear. Examples on the third law of motion, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. In dynamics, there are four basic equations that we need to be familiar with. First are the two kinematic equations that would describe the relationship between velocity, displacement, acceleration, and time. Third is the Newton's second law of motion, where force is equal to the product of mass and acceleration. The fourth one is the equation to get the length of an arc, where S is the length of an arc, which is the product of the radius and the central angle. So out of these four basic equations or four fundamental formulas, we can derive some formulas to be used in this subject. So we don't need to memorize all of them as long as we know how to derive them. For example, let us equate these two kinematic equations. Cancel out dt and we can get the third kinematic equation. Now from the newly derived equation, we incorporate it with the Newton's second law of motion. Then let us integrate it so we can derive for the principle of work and energy equation. Next, if we combine second and third equations, then integrate both sides, we can get the equation for principle of linear impulse and momentum. So by combining the four basic equations, we can derive series of formulas that involve rotational motion such as the angular velocity, angular acceleration, angular kinematics, the relationship between moment and angular acceleration, the work of moment and the principles of angular impulse and momentum, and more. Now, before we can proceed in solving problems, let us go back first with the displacement. Displacement is defined to be the change in position of an object. It can be defined mathematically with the following equation, where displacement is equal to delta x equal to x sub f minus x sub 0. x sub f refers to the value of the final position, x sub 0 refers to the value of the initial position, and delta x is the symbol used to represent displacement. The 
displacement is a vector. This means it has a direction as well as a magnitude and is represented visually as an arrow that points from the initial position to the final position. For example, consider this image from OpenStax College Physics with a professor pacing left and right while doing her lecture. So the professor's initial position is with x sub 0 equals 1.5 meters and her final position is for x sub f equals 3.5 meters. Thus, her displacement can be found as follows. Delta x equals to x sub f minus x sub 0 equals 3.5 meters minus 1.5 meters. So, this will be equal to positive 2 meters. In this coordinate system, motion to the right is positive while motion to the left is negative. Now, for your assignment, consider the passenger below that walks relative to the plane. So, for the airplane passenger's displacement, considering the initial and final positions given below. So, that's all for now. For further readings, see the links on the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell para updated ka sa mga lessons natin. Masalama! See you on our next topic.